Ah, right, the track's gone. Guess we're catching the bus then. Stay tuned and all will be revealed. Yes, the track has indeed gone. And yes, it looks like we're on the bus. <laughs> oh, well, I hope you enjoyed my little introduction there and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, as you can see then, the uh, bridge has now gone. And what we'll do is we'll talk about this section a bit later on in the video. So first of all, let's go straight to the bridge itself and I'll show you what we're doing there. Now, what you see in front of you is the start of Dinting Viaduct. Yes, it has got four rails which run the full length of the bridge. And they, I've chosen to use bought, yes, bought, <laughs> bought and paid for, um, RSJ or I-beam, if you like. So it's 600 millimetres long and there are four sections, so I had to buy eight pieces and glue them together. Now, I'll explain how what I've done with that in a minute. These pieces in the middle here are these little, I mean, you can see that, if I put my hand in front of it, hopefully you might be able to notice it. It's a little square adjoining section, if you like. Um, to see the exact details of how the bridge is put together is very difficult. Um, from above the side or even I've got a Google Earth image looking directly up and um, so there is an element of guesswork in this but I will try and include as many of the obvious features as I possibly can. Now we've got two rails for each track so there are two rails running for each side of the track which does make sense really because obviously when you've got potentially 100 ton train crossing it and um, the last thing you want is it dropping off from one side or another so to have two beams running from either side is a pretty good idea from that point of view now what are these pieces well if i show you this one these are um the middle two sections have like a, a, ra a raise and a fall it's upside down so it's actually going up like that and it goes narrow and there's a pillar just here or column so it drops down towards the middle to give that little bit of extra support so I've made a load of those which will go up through the middle and then there'll be a zigzag which runs up through there as well okay uh, and then once I've done that it'll be a case of putting all the struts on the top so I will get that done and I'll come back and show you shortly Well, just thought I'd bring you up to date where we are at the minute. Now, that's the main structure of the bridge as it is. And that's that's taken quite a while to get to these bits because all the, all the extra bits are all 3D printed. And it just takes a while to get everything done before you can put anything together. And then um, I went, I ran out of green paint and had to go and buy some more and only found out that um, Mr. Hobby had changed the um, code numbers. So I've bought what I think is the nearest, but it's not, it's not the same colour at all. It's slightly different, but I think once it's all painted up, you won't notice. But that's the way life is, I'm afraid, isn't it? Now, please understand um, that the structure of the bridge, I can only work it out from what I can see. And what I've got, I don't think is exact by any means, but... This is my interpretation of it. So please understand that. Um, it's not meant to be a replica of the bridge. It's an interpretation at the end of the day. And as long as um, the main thing looks vaguely similar to what it does from the outside or um, from a way away, that's all I'm interested in. Now, what we've got, um, these zigzags, which will fit top and bottom along and go in there. Uh, all the way along and like I said top and bottom painted green and then these are the fascia pieces which will sit in that channel there kind of like that and again there will be five along each side both sides all right and again they will be painted green so that's those pieces now what we've then got 
is there will be some more loads of 3D printed parts. I haven't worked out how many yet, but I've got a feeling it'll be about 20, if not 30. But pieces, square section pieces, which will just sit on the top, which will then support the railings. So I've obviously got to work out how I'm going to do that. Um, but that's that's going to be an interesting one, to be honest. And then on top of that, there will be some plates and the plates will go sort of there and in the middle. And those tracks will sit on top, kind of like that, on top of another plate. So the track will come up ever so slightly above that. Yeah, probably a millimetre, two millimetres at the most. But basically, we've got, if I show you with these slightly longer pieces, the tracks will effectively sit on those bars there like that and what's going to happen is the I'll show you on this pieces these sleepers all down the side here both edges will be removed and I'm sure there is a pattern to it but then every other or every so on there will be sleepers removed maybe three removed maybe four removed and there'll be bars going across at random places um, <laughs> Sounds a bit silly, but I'm going to have to look at the um, pictures to work out which ones to remove or not to remove. But um, you might be thinking, well, why didn't I go with a piece of flexi track, which would be more than enough to do this? Well, the reason being is because this is rigid. And if I used flexi track, the rails are floppy and they're designed to bend. That's the point. Um, whereas this... Um, I will probably solder those joints together, if I'm honest. But um, this track will take it. I can cut these sleepers out and I've still got that webbing running the whole length under the rail. And I'm not going to disturb that, not if I can help it anyway. So that's the main reason for it. So hopefully it'll look vaguely similar to what's there. That's my plan. But, um, you know best laid plans and all that <laughs> anyway i'll crack on with it and i'll show you again when i've done a bit more i right, just thought i'd show you this um whilst other parts are printing i thought i'd start cutting out sleepers from the track now there doesn't appear to be a huge pattern so i'm kind of making one to make my life a bit easier so i've copied as much as i can from the from a close a photograph which is close enough and then all I'm doing is I've gone so far down and then I've started again and just repeat it down. Now the gold um, highlighted sleepers are the ones that are going to be cut out. And what I need to do, if I just show you this one, I know my fingernails are dirty, don't comment about it. Um, I'm gonna cut up to the chairs um, and then just cut out the middle bit. If I cut the chairs off, I'm then releasing the rail and that's not what I wanna do. So. I'll get those cut out and hopefully I've got some I've got some track at the end of it otherwise it'll be going by more and stick it down as it is now <laughs> okay big there it is all the sleepers have now been cut so you can see what I mean it's a random pattern uh, and that runs the whole length now I think there's just about enough structural integrity in it um, as you can see we've still got the main rail running up there yeah it's it's got just about enough in that i think so my biggest issue with it is keeping it straight and keeping it um flat that way as well because i've soldered these two pieces on um you probably can just about make that out uh, but uh, hopefully it should be all right let's move on to the next bit. okay then so what we can see here is we have got the railing supports so that will fit on the track just like that and then obviously the railings are forming along the edge now to make sure I get them all in line what I'm going to do is put a little dob of super glue just there and another one just there and then place that on top like that and then use this little jig, which is a bit like um, uh, a gate, uh, set a tri square, like that, and that puts it in the right place because I can get the railings in line with the edge of the 
um, frame. So I've got to stop, if that makes sense. So that will sit kind of on there like that and that gets them all level. All right, and then all I need to do is just bend them back so that they look more or less parallel like that. You'll notice I've put a rail along here. Perhaps a further bit of forethought might have put two um, pieces like paddles along either side, but never mind. It works. And then all I'm going to do, not super glue, I'm going to use white glue, just a little dab on the joint there and there. Okay. Now, obviously, when the bridge supports come in, there are columns that come out um, every now and again, which is pretty much where these connections are going to be. You'll probably see one there, another one just there. Um, what I'll do is just snip off the end of the railing there so the bridge support can come up um, over the top and then that should work quite well. All right, catch you shortly. All right, so there it is so far then. And all the handrails are now attached, all 64 of them and <laughs> until forever, um, all taking 10 minutes each to print. So you can work that out yourself. And I have literally just finished putting those ones on, probably about five minutes. You can still see the white glue there, can't you? But anyway, so that's where we are for the time being. Obviously, all this lot and all that lot need painting green to match the middle section. Um, all the track has now been um, split and painted. So I I say split, I mean the sleepers have been cut off. Um, I'm quite liking that effect, the way that's looking now. Um, the other thing I've also done, you might be able to make out that I've, there's like a base to the track. Now that is literally just a sliver of plastic card. And this was a very badly cut piece. It's all wibbly wobbly, but it was the thinnest plastic card you can get. And I literally just painted that up, varying greys. So some really light greys and dark greys and blotched it all in together with sort of a dabbing action and then glued it to the bottom of the track. Um, there is a section which I believe, uh, I think it's there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. It's, it's in that bit there, just there. Track's moved out of position, that's why. Yeah, you can see it better now. There's a gap, or it appears to be a gap. So that could look quite nice. You look right the way through the bridge and see the scenery below. So that would be quite nice. And it will almost give the impression the trains are sort of balancing a little bit. Uh, there is um, like a platform to go up either side of that. And there's another one to go up through the middle. But it's getting there bit by bit. So what I'm going to do now is le leave this for a little while now. For uh, maybe a few hours, maybe a day or so. And start working on the pillars okay i'll get back to you shortly now this was my first attempt and it's too wide this way and it's not long enough that way so i've got to adjust it um, there is another piece that sits on top here and there's four of these so um, basically it's a complete two mil gray board card construction and um yeah basically um i will varnish that and then it will be papered with some uh, brick papers um scale scenes do quite a lot of those but you can get them from varying other places as well so i will crack on get the correct size made for that um do be aware that like i said before some of these will have to be snipped accordingly to accommodate the posts or the columns that come through so that will be sorted, but uh, bit by bit. Right, I thought I'd just show you this now. So this is one of the piers, as um, as you will see it. Uh, there are four of those um, it, to, in the middle of the bridge. And then you've got a traditional um, arch type bridge at either end. But um, if you can imagine two of these in between there is a, an extra support uh, pair, which I haven't made yet. Um, they're basically got the same base as these, but then this piece carries right up to about here. And then you've got a smaller piece which comes up and there's a little platform running around the outside with railings. So I will make those. But uh, there we go. That obviously needs covering with brick paper. It looks a bit rough and ready at the minute. But uh, to see it like that compared to... A big pile of card. 
Um, yeah, so that's where we are at the minute. So next job, what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to leave the other pier for a little bit and I'm going to see if I can sort out the actual layout itself and remove the old track. Right, so here we are then on the layouts. Now, obviously to build a bridge, um, you'll have seen, well, I've built something completely new. Um, so all this has got to come out. Um, I don't want to just destroy this track. Um, so I am going to um, take it up as much as possible, relieve it as much as possible. And then all of this will be removed right back to there. And then I'll reinstate um wherever it comes and because uh, it'll be just easier to use the same track from there on in i might have to adjust these to match up with what i've got put down but uh, it should be all right um, i am using this point again and maybe a little bit of this track here as well just to tie up with what's already going on to the bridge so we'll see how it goes i'll start doing it and i'll catch you shortly all right welcome back now what about this bit then because obviously we need to start thinking about the area now, what that piece down there was just there. So I've taken that out. And what I would like to do is drop this down by quite a long way. So I probably will be cutting this piece back a little bit, give a little bit more space there. And I'd like to try, if I physically can do it, remove this corner so that the whole thing can slope down a little bit. So obviously that means removing some of these electrics and things like that. Now, I do have a reciprocating saw, which is one where the blade goes in and out. So I'm hoping that there's not a lot directly underneath and I can just drill a hole and then just cut and cut and then that should be gone <laughs> we'll see how we get on with that i am going to leave that rail there for obvious reasons because if i take that out the structural integrity of the layout is compromised and i don't want to do that whereas this is just a corner piece and the structure will be here and here and, and also there's it's held by the board itself so that shouldn't be a, too much of a problem Let's see how we get on is there's the bridge in place i guess you want to see it from the side i've come down low for the start and that's it so far obviously there needs to be the extra supports go in there and on top of each one of these um there's a little extra bit of walling obviously those bits will need to be snipped out but if i take you down very gently you can see the the detail on the side of the girder, if you like, and then underneath. So hopefully you can see that sort of drop down bit that I was referring to earlier in the video. And all the actual supports themselves, they all need, like I said, need covering in brick paper. So what I had to do I did mention a part of the board being cut out. Well, I did mention this bit here, and that had to be dropped down. And that gave me, amazingly, the right height <laughs> um, with this piece that came out originally. And all I needed to do then was use a London bracket, which underneath there, which I had loads of. All right, let's have a look at the top. So obviously the track's not joined yet, but it'll need sorting out. But uh, you can certainly get the idea of where we're going with it now, can't you? And then obviously that will then join up with that. Uh, might have to rejig it slightly, but uh, get in there with it. And this bit here, um, I've got an idea, which I think is gonna work uh, to come across here. 
and it will mean I can have the wall um, starting well probably about there actually and I'll just blend it in and um, then I can just have a regular bridge type portal which if I think the idea will come off and it should hide that but yeah I'm getting there with it <laughs> so dad about it and uh, give you a little shot down there like that just from the other side of course you can see what this is going to look like this bit um, was the bit that was already there and the idea is to sort of flap it round but for the demonstration purposes here I want a gentle slope coming down and sort of banking down this way banking down that way and then a gentle rise coming up so it sort of rises up kind of like that and then all this area here will be smothered in trees and that will lead beautifully into this area here um, I can't believe how well I think it's going to work out um, but yes yeah, so obviously it's going to need some thinking about but yeah I was looking at the Tor Vale this morning I think I got that right the Tor Vale Millennium Bridge but yeah so I think that's going to work nicely but there you go I think I'll leave the video there leave you with that shot and uh, I'll see you again very soon yeah on Piccadilly not Piccadilly buses <laughs>